Hi everyone, welcome back to Emergency Chaos where we provide tips and tricks to new ER nurses. Today we will be going over the GCS score, what it is and how to calculate it. Once again, thanks for tuning in and don't forget that this is purely educational so please follow your hospital's policies and guidelines. So what is the GCS score? Essentially, it's a numerical scale used to measure a patient's level of consciousness. From my understanding, it was primarily used for patients with traumatic brain injury, but nowadays I see it used for almost every single patient. It's easy to calculate once you get the hang of it, and it provides a standard way to communicate to other medical staff what the patient's level of consciousness is. It's important to know because you'll be using it for almost every single patient you come in contact with, especially those who are on the sicker side. It helps medical staff track and trend how a patient's level of consciousness is doing. Otherwise, it's a sort of indirect way of measuring patient's overall progress. For example, if a patient arrived to the ED with a low GCS score, but after our interventions, the GCS score is beginning to improve, then we can safely assume that our interventions are working. There are three components to the scale, including eyes, verbal, and motor function, and it ranges from a score of 3 to 15. As we've discussed in the past, a GCS of 8 or less can indicate a patient with a severe condition that may even have to be intubated. While the higher you go up, up to 15, the less severe a condition that can be occurring. However, this is going to be very important what I'm about to say. It still needs to be accompanied by a thorough assessment so that you can figure out how sick your patient actually is. Because again, it's a simple rule of thumb. And a patient can be a GCS of 15 up awake and speaking to you, which is the best score possible, a GCS of 15, and still be having an MI, still be having a ruptured appendix, or something more severe, despite them being a GCS of 15. So again, it needs to be accompanied by a thorough assessment so you, that you can truly figure out what is going on with the patient and how sick they actually are. So now let's go straight into the first part of the scoring, the eyes. You can score up to four points. So at the top, spontaneous, which leads to four points, means that it, as soon as you walk into the room, the patient has their eyes open, looking at you or pretty much anything else in the room. Essentially, the patient is awake without any direct stimulus like pain. Next, for three points, is the patient opening their eyes to verbal stimuli, which can be as simple as knocking and introducing yourself, meaning that as soon as you do that, they wake up and open their eyes because of the noise or the verbal stimuli that you provided. Next, as you guessed it, for two points, is the patient not waking up or opening their eyes spontaneously or to the verbal stimuli. So you have to provide some type of painful stimuli like a sternal rub or nail bear pressure for them to open their eyes. And then finally, for one point, they don't open their eyes at all regarding of whatever you do. Now, let's go into the second part of the scoring, which is the verbal portion and you can score up to five points here. At the top, for five points is oriented, which means that the patient is essentially alert and oriented times four. These include person, place, time, and situation. And very importantly, and they are speaking in complete coherent sentences. Then for four points is the patient being confused. Here, the patient is still speaking in complete coherent sentences, but isn't oriented, meaning they might not know where they are at or the year or even their name. To put it simply, they're just confused. Next, for three points, the patient is still speaking, but not in coherent sentences. They may simply just be using random words to form sentences, and those sentences don't make sense. For example, if you ask a patient, what brings you to the ER, and they say something like, Peter cake potato dog or something in that nature, then that's a GCS of uh, three. However, as I mentioned earlier, the GCS is very important, but it must be accompanied by a thorough assessment combined with crucial critical thinking skills because you should be able to and you must be able to differentiate speech like this that can 
be perhaps from a stroke that's uh, exhibiting Wernicke's aphasia or other psychiatric conditions or other illnesses from other stuff, right? You should be able to differentiate these. And that's why it's also very important to accompany a GCS score with a very thorough assessment. And GCS, again, is only just a very small part of the overall assessment of a patient. And then again, going into the next part for two points is incomprehensible, meaning they are simply making sounds. And then for one point at the bottom, the patient is not speaking or making sounds at all. Finally, the last part is going to be motor function and you can score up to six points. At the top for six point, a patient is able to follow your commands, which can be as simple as give me a thumbs up, which is often used on patients who are intubated or comatose since it requires actual cognitive function is, is not just a reflexive action, which can sometimes happen when you say, hey, squeeze my fingers and the patient has a reflexive action of squeezing. Um, and then next for five points is purposeful movement, which means that if you provide a painful stimuli, the patient will reach towards the side of the stimuli in an attempt to remove it. So let's say you give a sternal rub and they, a, they then reach for their chest, then they would receive a five in this section for being purposeful. And then now for four points is withdrawing. By this, we mean that if you, again, provide some type of painful stimuli like a sternal rub or nail bed pressure, and the patient attempts to move away from the pain, then they are withdrawing and receive four points. Again, just attempting to move away from the, from the pain. An important thing though, that you must keep at the back of your mind, especially with neuro ICU patients, is that you must not confuse a simple reflex again, which can be a brief sort of like twitch and then going back to not moving, confusing that for an actual meaningful response. It has to be more than a simple, brief, quick twitch. It cannot be brief. It must be a maintained, meaningful response. Now, for the next, we have decorticate and decerebrate posturing, with, which both signify significant brain stem dysfunction and injury. So for three points, we have decorticate posturing, which after you provide stem painful stimuli to the arms, the wrists, or the to essentially just painful stimuli, the arms, the wrists, and the legs are flexed inward towards the core as shown by my uh, amazing drawing here. So again, the corticate for going towards the core, like your wrists, your arms, everything is flexed inward. And then for two points, we have the cerebrate posturing, which after providing stimuli, the arms, the wrists, and the legs extend outward away from the cord. And then it's shown by the example at the top. And then once you see it in real life um, for these two, you, you're not gonna forget how it looks. Uh, and then finally, for one point, there is no movement whatsoever. Now, let's go into some important details that you should be aware of. It's okay if you and a different examiner are a point off. However, you need to be on the same page when the point difference is between a GCS of 15 and a GCS of 14 for your patient. Usually, a GCS of 14 is not a 15 because the patient receives a 4 on the verbal portion, meaning that they are confused and if they are confused, you need to have a reason for this confusion. Is this confusion already baseline? Which is why it's very important for you to ask the baseline of your patients when you're getting report. And then, or is it from hypoglycemia, some electrolyte abnormality? There's lots and lots of things that can cause confusion. That's why you have to be very clear as to be on the same page between a GCS of 14 or a 15 and asking if it's a baseline for this patient. For example, if it's a new GCS of 14 and the patient is confused, are they able to make medical decisions for themselves? Primarily, what if they want to leave against medical advice, but they're confused? Can you just let them leave? What if they leave and they get ran over? Then you might be on the line for letting a patient leave who's confused and then they put themselves in harm's way and got hurt. You're essentially liable for that. For example, do note though that if a patient is a GCS of 15 and they're fully oriented, 
and they have a very threatening condition and they want to leave AMA after your attending has explained the risks, including death, of leaving AMA with a, with a life-threatening condition and they still want to leave, then they are definitely allowed to leave because if you hold them against their will, you're also liable for holding someone against their will. Just make sure that your attending physician or whoever your uh, provider is, is there to explain the risks of the patient and that they are in charge of the situation. And there's another tips that you should be aware of is that when you are writing out the GCS score, you also need to write it in parentheses and you need to write in parentheses which number you gave per, sec per section. So at the top I put here, I put a GCS of six at the top of the slide for the first point and then I put eyes one, V1, M4. So it stands for eyes one, verbal one, and then motor four. So that kind of puts it into perspective and there's no confusion as to why the patient got a GCS of six. Um, and then if you also see a GCS, of, a GCS score with the T at the end, it means that the patient is intubated. So if you see a T, the patient is intubated. And then finally, practice, 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 practice. You're not gonna get better unless you practice every single day that you work. And then before long, uh, doing the GCS score is gonna become just second nature to you. So now let's go into the question of the day. I'm gonna start doing question of the day or fact of the day so that I can start providing little facts that are useful um, for just being an ER nurse, right? So what is our question today? Uh, what is the usual resuscitation bolus dose of fluids in adult patients, especially those in septic shock um, with hypotension, right? So think of this answer and then just to verify your answer, if you know it or don't know it, the answer will be at the bottom of the description text. And then again, thank you for your time today. Um, I'm really happy that you guys were here and if you enjoyed and learned something from the content today I would really appreciate a like and a follow. I also would love if you guys would comment as things that you would like to learn I'm making videos little by little but if you're there's something that you want to learn specifically please let me know and I'll put those on top of my uh, to-do list. And then I've put some books as well in the description that I've read and that I just continually go back towards uh go, go back to so if you uh, want to check them out maybe you're gonna enjoy them too and then as always as always in the er teamwork makes the dream work and here at emergency chaos we are proactive and not reactive all right guys proactive and not reactive all righty guys bye